let me say this. In defense of L.A., my work, Tim's work, others' work, when we go digging up, and literally the case, not just old bones, but old records from the conquistadors that knew how to measure stuff, and skulls are 42 inches from the eye socket to the back of the head, when there are over 12 records, or records, forgive me, of stuff that is uh, uh, on the, uh, what would you say, on the radar and on the scenario of everyone else, then you can go and sit bothers me. It bothers me that people are that stupid to say, well, there's nothing over nine feet. I will make a statement right now that will probably astonish everybody. But the, the idea that there are people in the U.S. military and special operations of branches that everyone is known not to exist, in other words, there's no records, even to the point of, uh, you know, uh, finger um, fingerprints and other identifying marks being manipulated in such an extent that even if you had palm prints or anything, you couldn't tell that these were the original people. But when they tell me that they're battling the same things, L.A., that your guys told you that all, you know, that uh, all over, uh, uh, all over the, uh, um, what would you say, all over the military, I'm sorry, I got so much to say in a short time, that there are so many uh, eyewitnesses to this that it now is coming to the point in the mouth of two or three thousand witnesses, let every word be established. So, ladies and gentlemen, you may not believe the 1880s or the uh, 1909s or whatever the reports of the Kincaid expedition, but you were told that, and we were told by an insider, 174 million artifacts that are historically out of place or scientifically out of place are stored in the warehouses under the Smithsonian's care. And just to prove this, and I'll give it right back to you, L.A., I'm excited about this. I've been fighting with the uh, 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 pimples waiting to pop. That's a pretty gross description of some people that don't believe anything about the Giants and they make sure that their opinions are all over the Internet. Finally, finally, there are some people in Australia New Zealand that have done a marvelous tracking of Maui. Maui is one of the islands, obviously, in the Hawaiian Island change, but they don't understand that that was also an Egyptian seafarer that basically there's so much evidence now, it can't be denied, that sailed the entire Pacific, sailed the entire Pacific. The gods of Egypt were in there and everything. Now, fast forward to the late, um, oh, the late 1880s, and uh, one of the guys who was an Egyptian uh, prime minister, he asked the Smithsonian, he asked the U.S. government to return all Egyptian artifacts that were in the United States or to destroy them. Now, what does that sound like? That sounds like basically an Egyptian parliamentarian or, parliamentarian or, you know, the prime minister basically wanted everything covered up or brought back under his control. So what I'm saying is this, ladies and gentlemen, when I hear, and I, I'm saying this, when I hear someone make a dumbass statement, like there's nobody over seven feet tall, well, then he better just give it up and forget basketball, because the point being is that thousands of records testify against him. Every myth and legend testifies against him. Every single newspaper article, every single fine, people that have spent 50 years of their lives on the opposite side of the world tracking this. So again, somebody says, well, you sound like you're a little irritated. Oh, yeah. But it's beyond irritation. It's beyond the fact that why would someone claiming to be, quote, a believer, attack when he can't attack on the basis of fact, but just make, you know, uh, uh, stupid statements, but he can't back it up on history. If we write books, if we talk to the Native American elders, if, if L.A. goes to Peru, he deals with, uh, with all the Paracas skulls. And by the way, that's not head-binding. Why do you think the Egyptians, who didn't practice head-binding, head-bound? How do you think blonde-haired, blue-eyed people got to Peru uh, in the Chachapoyo region? How do you think those blonde-haired, blue-eyed people ended up in the South Pacific? How do you think all this stuff spread? It wasn't because of isolationism. It was because of diffusionism. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah you know, that, th those two words, isolationism, diffusionism, we need to just break off for a second and talk about it. The Darwinists believe in isolationism. That's the prevailing paradigm all through archaeology, all through uh, the Darwinian scientific community. That's what they believe, that people are basically isolated. They really don't move around. They just kind of stay there, and things move very, very, very slowly. I'm a diffusionist. I know Stephen is. There's a whole bunch of us out there, and the diffusionist believes, no, people want to travel. 
People go, well, what the heck's over that hill? I don't know. Let's go. Okay, let's pack a lunch and go. And that's what we believe happened. We know, look, I'll tell you something, Steve. It's really interesting. Um, the isolationists insist that America's Stonehenge uh, didn't exist, that the Phoenicians weren't there, yada, yada, yada. And yet, and yet, when we go to America Stonehenge, which I've been to, and, I, and it's actually when, uh, all that research is in one of the books plus a YouTube video, whatever. The bottom line is, in a hedge of the circle, there are standing stones, sometimes 100 yards, sometimes 200 yards away from the center of the hedge. So when you stand there in the center of the hedge on the summer solstice, which is the longest day of the year, the sun comes up over that standing stone. Most Native Americans did not create sites like this. But wait, it gets better. And this is what's amazing. And this is the work of Kelsey Stone. He went on Google Earth and he drew a line from the center of America's Stone Head, which is in New Hampshire, okay? Drew the line out to the summer standing stone to see where it would go. And he continued the line and continued it and further and further and further. And he wound up in England. But he wound up in Stonehenge, England, and that line bisected perfectly the center trilithon, which is three stones, two uprights, and a column on the top, creating like a a, um, a bar up on top, a, a doorway essentially. And that's impossible, and it's not a coincidence. And when he continues the line further because of the curvature of the earth, all you flat earthers out there, you wind up in... Beirut, Lebanon. Beirut, Lebanon was one of the homes of the Phoenicians. It's diffusionism. They traveled. And that site was abandoned. And then you move over slightly just to another place where I've been numerous times, a great circle mound in Ohio, which when you stand there, the first thing that hits you is, my gosh, how did they do this? There, it's a hinge. There's a moat on the interior, a waterway on the interior which goes down about eight feet below the surface, the entire area is dead flat. Why? Because the moat won't work, or the, the hinge part, the waterway inside the hinge, will not work unless the area is flat. That begs the question, how do ancient Americans in the Stone Age, because there are no iron tools pre-Columbian, how did they do that? There are no transits. How did they do that? There are no levels. How did they do that? Yet it's there. And originally, there were two serpent heads at the entrance to this thing. It's a highly charged place. They found evidence of human sacrifice. Surprise, surprise. And what's amazing is originally, when the white man came into the area, they asked the Native Americans, who built this? And the Native Americans, and this is on record, stated, we don't know. It was here when we got here. And that goes back to, I call it Nephilim architecture, Fallen Angel technology. Because in my opinion, that all these sites, you can only really appreciate them from the air. And who is the prince of the power of the air? Uh, Satan. So good question. Well, hey, Doug, I can't resist. Maybe that's what the Beatles were talking about. Strawberry <laughs> forever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll let it to Oh, man. Well, it, 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 you know, coming out of my mouth, that question seemed a little bit odd. However, I had to ask that question because that's been bugging me for like two years. I just it, 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 it almost seems like everywhere I go or everywhere I look with respect to these mounds, there are strawberries. And maybe it's just like the area. I don't know. But help me out. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. All right. Okay. Well, hey, Doug, are we taking a break or are we going through it? No, go go through it. Uh, you, your words are okay. valuable. Network has agreed to, to bypass a break. So go ahead. Uh, thank you. Thank all the sponsors, too. Here's, here's where we're at, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the Rosetta Stone, which was found by Champollion that gave the ability to translate hieroglyphics into Greek and Dodatic, uh, you know, which is kind of a, I think it's a Syrian language, D-O-D-E-T-I-C. There are so many stones. Now, you know, what's interesting about the witness, um, excuse me, <laughs> we got smoke in the air in Montana, and it's just 
Holland Central. We've got so many witnesses in the stars and in the monuments of stone. And for the record, fake news didn't exist then. The idea was simply that they recorded what they saw. They tried to explain it. But the advanced technology of all of the positioning of the megaliths, the monoliths, the cyclopean architecture, the Nephilim architecture, the map genius of it all, it did not come out of a pond, and it did not come out of uh, people crossing the land bridge into, uh, from Eurasia into the, uh, you know, the North American, South American continent. What it is, is it's a testimony to the fact that they, they, this is the, I think this is a point we got to get across, L.A., the official, if you will, subversion of truth, they're going to use all of these, everything we've been talking about, Tom Warren's been writing about, we've all been talking about, writing about, making videos about, it's all going to be used by the globalists, the luminists, the Satanists, the Luciferians to present a total different history than the Bible. And what's critical to understanding this, the one thing the devil hates more than anything is the Word of God, the Holy Bible. 